What is up guys? We're back with another video and today we're going to be talking about the brand new NVIDIA GeForce RTX 5070. Now back when this was first announced at CES in January, it was probably one of the most hyped graphics cards all because of this. This is when NVIDIA told us that the RTX 5070 would have the same level of performance as the RTX 4090 for only $549. And as you'll see in this video, both of those things probably aren't true. So let's go ahead and take a look. Going over specs here on the RTX 5070, it's based on NVIDIA's GB205, having 6,144 CUDA cores, 48 RT cores, 192 Tensor cores, 192 TMUs, and 80 ROPs. When it comes to memory, you're gonna have 12 gigabytes of GDDR7 that does run across a 192-bit memory interface. As far as speeds go, the default clock speed is gonna be 2,325 megahertz, and the GPU boost is gonna be 2,512 megahertz. Now the specific card that we're taking a look at today is Zotex Solid OC. This does have a factory overclock, so the GPU boost goes all the way up to 2,542 megahertz. Now this is actually the first Zotec card that I've taken a look at in a while, so I'm kind of new to the Solid line. Now there's a Solid, which is gonna be their MSRP card, and then this card is the Solid OC, which again, does have that factory overclock. From everything that I've gathered, both cards have the same cooler, the same RGB lighting, the same full metal backplate. The only difference is going to be that factory overclock. When it comes to dimensions, I'll go ahead and put the official dimensions of the card right here like I always do. As you can see, this is not a super large card by any means. When it comes to the design of the card, I actually really like the design. It's sort of like an industrial sort of look. So the shroud itself is going to be this gunmetal color and we have all of these like slits cut into it. We have a Zotec gaming logo, which is sort of like a gold and you'll see that gold throughout the card. Embedded in the shroud are your three cooling fans and these are part of Zotec's Ice Storm 3.0 cooling solution. They are the blade length fans, so the blades are actually connected to an outer frame. This provides optimized airflow intake as well as reinforced structural rigidity. As we take a look at the card from the side, we can see it's not that thick at all. This is truly a two slot card. There are multiple heat sinks which are connected by heat pipes. On the side of the card that will show if you have a window in your case, there's a GeForce RTX logo as well as Zotec gaming logos. The Zotac gaming logos will light up with RGB lighting, and this will be the only lighting that you will get on the card. Right in the center of the card is gonna be your 12VH PWR power connection. Flipping the card over to the back, we have a full coverage metal backplate, which is great to see, and it does have a large Zotac gaming logo on it. Towards the end, there's a cutout for your pass-through cooling. Moving to our connections, we have three DisplayPort 2.1B and a single HDMI 2.1B. Also, you can see the card is slotted for two slot. And as I mentioned, this is truly a two slot card. Now we're gonna go ahead and move on to testing. So here's a full breakdown of our test system.
one of the big features of the RTX 50 series is going to be DLSS 4 and more importantly, multi-frame generation. So up on the screen here, you can see how DLSS 3 used to work. So we would render a frame and then we would generate a frame and we would essentially double our frame rate. Now with multi-frame generation in DLSS 4, now we can render a frame and generate up to three frames. So we can exponentially increase our frame rate. So to test this within 3D Mark, there's a DLSS 4 feature test and we did all three tests. We did 2X, 3X, and 4X. So 2X is essentially what you would do for DLSS 3. And without anything enabled, without DLSS, we only got just about 30 FPS, which is pretty bad. But we enable DLSS and when we generate one frame or 2X, we get 117 FPS, which is really good. We move up to 3X and that goes up to 160 FPS. And then we go to the max, which is gonna be 4X, that we get 195 FPS. So again, a great way to drastically increase your frame rate. We also tested this within Cyberpunk 2077, and I'll put that graph up on the screen so you guys can go ahead and see that. But again, DLSS 4 in multi-frame generation is a great way to dramatically increase your frame rate, especially on a card at this level. You know, if you're dropping beat, below a specific frame rate, this will be a great way to increase that frame rate. You just have to remember that your title has to support DLSS 4. Now, as we come to the end here, I wanna put up on the screen again, what NVIDIA told us back in January, RTX 4090 level performance for $549 in the RTX 5070. And of course you, you saw all the graphs in this review, you saw previous reviews. We know that that's definitely not the case. And again, the $549, we'll, we'll talk about that as well. Overall performance of this card, um, we directly compared it to an RTX 4070. At 1440p, it's anywhere from 12 to 18% faster in our test. Um, not necessarily compelling, but, but okay, I would say. At 4K, that diminishes a little bit, probably 10 to 12% faster than an RTX 4070. Now, that would be kind of okay, but you also have an RTX 4070 Super, as well as an RTX 4070 Ti still available in, you know, pricing and everything like that. So it just makes this card very much underwhelming, especially considering all of the hype that we've seen around this card. It's just very underwhelming performance wise. I would say overall, it is a decent 1440p card. Um, pricing is okay too, but when it comes to pricing, do we know if we're even gonna get it at MSRP? You know. MSRP was typically reserved for Founders Edition cards for the most part, especially when it came to availability. Um, but for some reason at this launch, Nvidia does not have Founders Edition ready for launch, which is today. I, I don't understand. It seems like, uh, yeah, I, I don't know why you wouldn't have Founders Edition ready at launch. It just doesn't make sense to me. So those are coming later this month. If you even wanna try to get this card at MSRP, um, all of the AIBs will also have MSRP cards available. We don't know how many they will have, how fast they're gonna sell out. If it's anything like any of the other cards in the RTX 50 series, it's all gonna be gone, it's gonna be scalped. We won't be able to get cards at their MSRP price. And talking about that, I also really have noticed, especially RTX 50 series, is that all of the AIB cards are so high priced over what the MSRP should be. And I don't blame the AIB so much as when Nvidia prices these cards, they price them out of the reach as, as far as AIB is actually making any money are off of the MSRP cards. For example, this solid OC card from Zotac, it is $699. So it's $150 premium 
over the MSRP model. Now, Zotec also just has a solid non-OC version, which is supposedly the MSRP price. So for just a simple overclock, it's $150 more. That just doesn't make any sense. Again, it's one of those things where you can't blame the AIBs. You can kind of blame NVIDIA. And we're kind of at this point where there's like a batch of like 20 MSRP cards from each company. Once those are gone, they're never made again or they're never available. And then we have to buy cards like this, which again, you can't blame the AIB so much, but it's just one of those things where we have this phantom MSRP from NVIDIA where it's only the Founders Edition and maybe like the first day of sales for AIB cards and then that's it. You don't see them ever again. With tariffs coming up as well, will that $549 MSRP even be there? We don't, you know, we don't know. I just think the RTX 50 series launch in general and even the GPU market in general is in such a bad place because there's no availability of any cards. The MSRPs are essentially phantom MSRPs. And again, the performance is, is kind of underwhelming too. Um, and that's kind of where we're at. I think the possibly the only shining light is that also today, reviews of the uh, Radeon RX 9070 XT and 9070 are coming out. And those are supposed to have high availability at launch, which is a good thing, and high availability of MSRP. Now, I don't have one into review. I haven't had one. I hopefully will get one in a couple of weeks, but as of right now, I don't know the performance based on what AMD has shown, which we take with a grain of salt. It is going to be pretty compelling against this card and the 5070 Ti. So I would say if you're looking at this level of card, a, a 70 series class of card, wait to see what AMD does. Wait until the full reviews come out. Um, this card is okay for a 70 class card. It's just very underwhelming. And again, the whole situation of the GPU market just makes it even worse. So that's kind of where I'm gonna leave it. Wait to see what AMD does, see the availability, even see if you can get MSRP models of this card. It's just all kind of a waiting game and seeing what's available. But overall, pretty underwhelming and the GPU market just basically sucks right now. So let me know what you think of the RTX 5070 and the GPU market in general, and we'll see you guys in the next video.